What's up everybody? I'm going to do an example of a t-test for mu1 minus mu2. Here we go. Alright, so the example reads, the article, the sorority rush process, self-selection, acceptance criteria, and the effect of rejection reported on a study of factors associated with the decision to rush a sorority. 54 women who rushed a sorority and 51 women who did not were asked how often they drank alcoholic beverages. For the sorority rush group, the mean was 2.72 drinks per week and standard deviation 0.86. For the group who did not rush, the mean was 2.11 and the standard deviation 1.02. Is there evidence to support the claim that those who rush the sorority drink more than those who do not rush? Uh, test the relevant hypotheses using alpha equals 0.01. And it also, the follow-up question, what assumptions are required in order for the two-sample t-test to be appropriate? All right, so what I like to do is just start by notating all of the numbers that are given to me in the problem. So I'm going to start with the uh, first sample, which I'm going to call sample or population one. So sample one, the sample mean of population one is 2.72 with a sample standard deviation. So that's going to be S1 of 0.86. The first sample size was 54. So N1 was 54. Then for the second group, X bar 2, 2.11, S2, 1.02, and 2 is 51. We're using an alpha value of 0.01. The other thing I like to do is look at what is the difference of the two sample means. So I want to subtract X bar 1 and X bar 2, and that ends up being 0 .0, uh, 0 0.61, so 0 0.61. So that's the difference between the two sample means um, in terms of number of drinks per week. All right, so that's just kind of writing down all of the information. So now what I want to do is move to step one. So step one of my four-step process is to uh, identify the parameters of interest and write hypotheses. So here we have really we have two parameters. We have mu1 and we have mu2. So mu1 is going to end up being the true mean number oops, true mean number of drinks per week consumed by women in the rush group. Okay, so that's mu1. Mu2 is the true mean number of drinks per week consumed. by women who did not rush. All right, and what I'm trying to do in this test is show that women that rush drink more on average than women that do not rush. So we're gonna reflect that in our hypothesis. So our null hypothesis, almost always for a, a test like this is that mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero. So if that null hypothesis were true, um, that would mean that the two averages would be the same for those populations. Um, so that's what we're going to assume to be true, but what we want to show is true is that mu1 minus mu2 is greater than zero. So that average for the rush population is higher than the average for the, the women that didn't rush. All right, so this is going to be an upper-tailed test. Um, if it were a less than, it would be a lower-tailed test. If it were a not equal to, it would be a two-tailed test. Uh, but this, again, is upper-tailed. 
Um, step two, we uh, need to test our conditions and then we're gonna name our procedure. Um, so one thing about this one is when it went through the problem statement, it didn't talk about the sample being random. So what I usually do if, if, if it's not stated to be random is I'll just note that. So I'll say it does not appear that the samples were random. So I'll note that, I'll continue with the test, but again, I will note that that condition is not, does not seem to be met. Um, next condition, uh, we want to have a normal sampling distribution. So remember, we can do that if our sample sizes are over 30. So N1 was 54, which is greater than 30. N2 is 51, which is also greater than 30. So that meets that condition. Um, and then we also need um, independent sampling. Um, so we'll assume that our samples were no more than 10% of the population. If I look at my samples of 54 and 51, if I were to multiply those by 10, 540 and 510 um, for the population sizes, I would say yes, that um, that would be true, that both of those populations would be larger than those numbers. So. Uh, we'll just say something like, um, it is reasonable to assume both samples are less than 10% of the population. All right. So uh, basically two out of three conditions were met. So what I'm gonna say is that although the randomness of the samples is unknown, we will proceed with a t-test for mu1 minus mu2. All right, we know that it's a t-test because the sample standard deviation, so these numbers here, did come from the sample. So those are s values and not sigma values. So we're using a t-test here instead of a z-test. The mechanics of the z-test are, are very similar to this, but um, we, are, we will proceed with that with that t-test. All right, so what we're gonna do now for step three, where we actually carry out the test, uh, this is kind of more of the, where we kind of do the math here, um, is we need a picture, a test statistic, which is a t in this case, and then a p-value. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll start with I'm going to start with the picture. So we do have we're going to going to use this t distribution. All right, and then we're going to this is going to be the x bar one minus x bar two axis. Underneath that is the t axis. This is going to be centered at zero. That's at my null hypothesis, so it's going to be centered. We're going to assume that that difference uh, would be zero. The difference of your um, sample beans would be would be zero. Um, and then I need to figure out what to count by. So I need a standard error, and the standard error that I'm going to use for this problem is so sigma sub x bar one minus x bar two is the square root of s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. All right, so if we uh, put in the numbers now from our 
problem or from the problem statement. It's point eight six squared over fifty four. plus 1.02 squared over 51. Um, and that ends up being about 0.185. All right, so we're gonna count by 0.185. Okay, so then about and then remember that our sample difference that we got from the problem statement was at about 0.61. That's going to be here. And then because we're doing an upper tail test, I'm going to shade this to the right here. Okay, I'm also gonna add a t-axis to my picture here. So, then I'm just gonna add this in here. So this would be negative one, zero, one, two, three. And then that 0.61 is gonna be a little bit above three of those standard errors. So now what I can do is now I can calculate what the t-value would actually be. So t would be 0.61 minus the mean of the sampling distribution, which is that difference, uh, which is that, which comes from that null hypothesis. And I'm gonna divide by that standard error value. And I'm gonna get a T value of about 3.304. All right, so that's then my T. Um, so now what I can do is I can use TCDF to find my P value. So that's the point of step three is, is to obtain a P value. And I like to use my TI calculator to calculate my um, p-value. So I use the TCDF function. So it's an upper tail test. So I put that z-score in as my lower boundary. I do 1E99 as my upper boundary. And then I use the smaller of the two degrees of freedom for a conservative estimate of, of the degrees of freedom. So that's So I'm using 50, and that just comes from... 51 minus 1. All right, so if I put all that into TCDF on my calculator, I'm going to get a p-value of 0 .00088. Um, so that's my p-value, so it's going to be pretty small. Um, and then if I look at my picture, that will be um, uh, pretty small. So then um, I'm going to use that p-value. Then in step 4, I'm going to compare that p-value to my alpha. So my p value, oops, let me, sorry, let me just, so I wanna, I wanna notate that as p value. And I'm gonna compare that p value to uh, alpha. So this is gonna be less than alpha equals 0.01 which will then allow me to reject the null. So if I reject the null, and remember the null is that there is no difference, I'm gonna have evidence for my alternate hypothesis. So then I just wanna write then that out in, in context. So I'm just gonna say then that there is significant evidence To conclude that women in the rush group drink more on average. All right, so I did see that uh, there is significant evidence to show that there is a positive difference there, which then will allow me to reach that conclusion. All right, so that's your tutorial for the t-test for mu1 minus mu2. Thanks for watching.